Hey guys, Carrie Lee here with Pira Vita Vitality and Nutrition. And today what um, I'm going to have a short discussion with you all about is about GMOs or genetically modified organisms and what they're doing in our food supply and what you can do about it if you'd like to. So first of all, um, a lot of people in society don't know what GMOs are. And this is because um, these huge agricultural, biotech, uh, multinational corporations that are worth billions and billions of dollars, and the government kind of did this on a very, very quiet level with um, administering, as I'd like to say, GMOs or genetically modified crops into our, um, into our world. Um, especially in Canada and the U.S. So they did this on a very quiet level without, um, without people, without the public knowing about it. And I think this is because they might be concerned um, that there would be a little bit of a, an outcry about it. So now people are finding out after the fact what is going on with their food and with their food supply. So that's what uh, this is all about and um, just a few pieces of information for you. So there's a couple problems with genetically modified organisms in our food. Uh, first of all, um, these, these crops um, can be pesticide producing. So that means that a gene is inserted into, let's say, corn, a type of corn um, called Bt corn. Um, so this um, Bt is a type of protein that basically works as a pesticide. So now insects, bees, bugs, um, beetles, whatever it is, um, butterflies, land on the corn and try to eat it, but will die because this, um, this Bt or this um, pesticide that is being produced within the corn causes their stomachs to explode, causes um, central nervous system malfunction and death, ultimately. So... Basically, this is sold to the farmers because now the farmers have to worry about bugs a lot less and therefore they will have higher yields and more crops at the end of the year. So the only problem with this is that um, there's still um, sometimes weeds and other you know things like that that will grow up beside the corn or whatever crop is planted and these can be pests. So now farmers can actually also um, lay down a huge amount of uh, pesticides, herbicides, and things like that, and um, the crops that are genetically engineered or genetically modified can withstand this, but um, the weeds can't. So now people are getting a huge, huge dose of pesticides, herbicides, and um, chemicals, fertilizers that are sprayed onto the food that they'll be eating. And unfortunately, it's not just as simple as washing the produce off once you get it. It actually not only can be from within the inside of the plants, for example, like I mentioned, the Bt corn, which has the pesticide woven into its DNA, um, so now you're having it there, but then also these things, um, unfortunately, um, soak in through the skin of the veggies and fruits and other produce that you're eating, so again, you just can't simply wash it off, and that uh, creates a huge problem with toxicity with people, um, as well as um, if you do your research, there's a lot of information showing that um, there are huge problems with glyphosate, which is one of the fertilizers that um, is commonly used, also known as Roundup, um, as well as some of the other pesticides and herbicides out there. And there are short-term as well as long-term effects of using these things. And now these um, chemicals are so um, problematic in today's society because farmers are overspraying. Um, you know, there, there's, there's lots of issues with that alone. The other problem that comes into hand, apart from the chemicals that are being used, is the actual uh, process of genetic modification itself of the crop. And um, an example of this is if, um, if you get a tomato, um, a nice, uh, nice round, bright red tomato, did you know that you could be having fish genes in that tomato? And basically what the scientists and, and geneticists have done is they have taken um, the DNA sequence or the gene from um, an, a type of Arctic fish called a flounder and they've pulled it out and they've put it in this tomato. So that's kind of odd. Why would they do that? And the reason being um, in this circumstance is because the flounder living in the deep cold seas of the Arctic produces its own version of like an antifreeze. So now this is the gene that has been taken out and inserted into the tomato, as well as strawberries have the same, uh, same gene inserted into them as well, if they are a GMO strawberry. And what this does is this helps prevent the tomato and the strawberry survive frost. So if there's frost early on in the year, um, when this produce is planted, it can still survive that. 
So now when you're having tomatoes or strawberries that are um, potentially genetically uh, modified or conventional, so basically if you're not buying organic, you could be having fish genes in your tomatoes and strawberries. Just kind of, I don't know, I'm kind of leery about that whole thing. And unfortunately, there's been a lot of uh, research that has shown that uh, with genetically modified organisms and genetically modified crops, that there are a lot of issues. And the problem is, is that there are no long-term studies done on this. And that's because we're the guinea pigs. We're going to find out in 10, 20, 30 years if this is creating a problem or not. Because um, it's only been in the food supply since, uh, heavily anyway, since 1996. So for a relatively short period of time. And all of the studies that have done on animals, um, a lot of them anyways, have shown some pretty significant side effects. GI um, damage, like holes in the stomach and the small intestine, um, immune system regulation problems, cholesterol regulation problems, blood sugar level regulation problems, insulin regulation problems, um, you know, uh, immune issues, as I think I already mentioned. And also they've been shown that... Um, a lot of these mice have been, or, or, or other animals that the studies have been done on, have been fertile after having um, a high GMO diet. Or if they have had babies, they've had preterm deliveries or low birth weight, um, or babies that have had um, some sort of genetic um, mutations or some sort of, um, you know, some sort of strange characteristic to them. So I just feel that if this is happening with the animals that we're doing these studies on, then what's the effect on us if we don't even know there's no studies that have been done to date um, with genetically modified organisms with people. So that's why I say that we are the guinea pigs, because there's been no science um, done whatsoever on this. So it's kind of freaky. So for me, I like to try to stay away from GMOs as best as I possibly can. And you can do this by um, either by buying organic. So if you buy organic, it means that it is absolutely not GMO, as well as um, they are very limited with the types of fertilizers that they can use. Everything has to be natural. So they don't have those nasty chemicals, um, pesticides, herbicides, and things like that that conventional farmers do have on their products or their crops. And then the other thing that you can do is um, try to buy from your local farmers or local farmers markets, especially if you can talk to the farmer and if you can find out uh, for sure that the crops that they are growing are indeed not genetically modified. You can also start your own garden. You don't need a lot of space to do this. Just grow a couple of crops that you tend to use often. So if you like having a lot of salads in the summer and you like tomatoes, then grow your own tomatoes or grow your own cucumbers. And really, they don't require too much work. And you can just, um, this is something that you could just Google online, how to start a garden. And you could even do it from your apartment building. You could just start a... Um, uh, like out, out the window, just like a little bit of like a garden with a few flower pots, for example. And really, you don't need a lot of space to do this. And if you have kids, they love to see stuff grow. So please include your children or if you have any nieces or nephews or anything like that that would be interested in seeing this because nature is pretty cool and it teaches them a lot from a young age. So if you're interested in more, um, I am doing a couple of classes on this in the uh, Southern Ontario area at Goodness Me Locations. So check out my website at www.puravitavitality.ca to find out the upcoming dates. Um, and then also you'll see on there the other topics that I ha um, have classes on as well. And um, please leave me a comment below here so I can find out um, what you like and, uh, you know, we can just start a discussion here and, uh, and see what other people think about this whole, whole topic and what we can do about it. And so you can find me on Facebook as well at Pura Vita Vitality and Nutrition because um, I do update regularly with some great health tips um, surrounding fitness and diet and stress levels and things like that. Um, I'm always up to date on research with different topics to do with health and nutrition. I put some really cool recipes up there as well as a bunch of other freebies. All right, so check me out if you're interested. Have a great day.